Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my Find Stuff in a Text Box video series. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one and then come on back. Alrighty, welcome back. In part one, we made this box here and we made a Find Box and a Find First button. And if I type in something like World, World Wide, Wide, Wide. <laughs> What's that from? And we hit find, it finds it. All right, that's great, that finds the first one. How do we find the next one? Well, remember in the last video when I told you that the, where are you? The in-string function actually takes a different first parameter. It says start. What is that? These are all optional, okay? And in-string is smart enough to realize that if you put a number there, it starts searching there. So if I put a five there, that means it's going to start searching at character five. Okay. If you don't put a number there, then it assumes, these are all variants, by the way. It assumes that you want to start with that as your text. It's very weird the way they did that. Usually, you know, these optional parameters usually come at the end. But in this particular case, they put it first. It's really weird. But knowing that, all we have to do is say, okay, if the user's hitting the find next button, then we're gonna start somewhere other than position zero, the, the, the beginning, right? All right, now I don't wanna have a lot of this code duplicated. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take all of this stuff here, okay? And we're gonna put it inside a function. So leave this up here. We're gonna still work with the button, but we're gonna say down here, private sub, which means only this form can use it, do find text optional, start position as along, and we're gonna default starting at one. Okay, so if we don't say anything, it's gonna start at position one. All right, get rid of that extra space there. Now, the find first button is gonna say, do find text and sub. That's all. So as of right now, everything is exactly the same. Okay, and we have to take start position now and stick that there. Okay, so now we've, we're specifying a start position, but find first is still gonna have it at one because we're not gonna send a value in. All right, let's make sure everything still works. Let's save it, debug compile once in a while, come back out here, open it back up. I'm gonna type in Amicron, hit find first, and we're good. Everything still works fine. Okay, now let's make a find next button. Come down here, we can make this a little smaller. That much space, right? Okay, find first. And let's make find next. Copy, paste. We're gonna stick you right next to it. Find next. All right, let's open up your properties. We'll call you the find next button. And now let's go back and right click build event. Go back to the editor. All right. Now with find first, we're always gonna start at position one, okay? With find next, I need to start at whatever the last position that I found one was at, <laughs> right? So if I'm finding one now, let's say, and I find Amicron at position 14, okay? If I hit find next, I need to know that 14 so that I can say, okay, find the next one which would, in other words, start the search at position 15. Now, you can't rely on reading cell start because as soon as you click this button, the focus leaves this and you lose that data, right? If I'm in here, okay, if I'm in here and I search for, let's say Microsoft, all right, find first. All right, position, just hypothetically, let's say it's 50, okay? If I wanna hit find next, the second I hit find next, this field loses focus and you lose that data, okay? You lose whatever value that was unless you save it yourself the last time the search is run, okay? Now, there are many ways to save it. You could put it in a hidden text box. You could put it in a form level variable up here, or you could put it in Adam's favorite, a temp var. I like temp vars too. Let's use a temp var. So what I'm gonna say is right here, after it finds the text, we're gonna say temp vars, let's call it last position, 
equals position plus one. Wherever you currently found it, start one character over to the right. Make sense? Okay. Now, down here, when they click the find next button, I'm going to say do find text, which is my little sub there, tempvars last position. So in other words, run this, but send into it a start position of whatever this tempvars was. See? All right. All right. Debug compile. Looks good. Save it. Close it. Open it. Let's search for Amicron. Whoops. Amicron. Can't type today. Find first. There it is. Find first again. It goes right back, finds the first one again. All right. Find next. Ah, oh, look at that. Because it knows the temp bar says, hey, we found it up here. So start searching for it again from the next character over. Okay. See how that works? And then if I'd find next again, it doesn't find it. Uh -huh, see, a eh, eh. couple little minor things um, down here in the find next button. If the user doesn't click find first, first, right? They just click find next. We don't want an error to generate. So we're going to say if is null our temp var, right? If that's null, then temp vars last position equals one. In other words, if they don't click find first before they click find next, we're just going to set that to one. Okay. We're also going to set that to one here if it doesn't find it. Okay. Just a couple little cleanup items. And now save it. Close it. I like to, whenever I make a, a programming change, I like to close and reopen the form. It just makes sure everything is fresh. Right. I'll search for OST. Find first. There it is. Find next. There it is again. Find next, and it doesn't find it a third time. There you go. Whoops, I just hit my scroll wheel, and I didn't have a scroll. <laughs> that makes that noise. Um, but that'll do it. That's how you make your find first, find next buttons. Now, in Heather's database, she only really wants to search the book summary on the page she's on. But what if you do want to search in all of the other records, too? Well, then we just have to make it go to the next record until it finds the next bit of text that you're looking for. How do you do that? Well, we'll cover that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and everybody gets some free training. And if you really want to learn how to unlock the potential of Microsoft Access searches, I have a whole seminar that teaches you everything you could possibly want to know about searching, finding, filtering, and all that stuff in Microsoft Access. It's called the Search Seminar. Check it out. It's nine and a half hours long. It covers all all this stuff there's lots of stuff in here folks it's one of my more popular uh seminars uh, you name it it's covered if it has to do with searching and sorting we do all kinds of, like natural language searches different types of sort buttons multiple fields uh, you name it it's in here okay okay and of course in addition to searching and sorting i got tons of developer lessons covering everything from a to z when it comes to vba a to z for vba <laughs> there you go and before I let you go, I just wanted to share this with you. Oftentimes when I put together an outline for a video that I want to make, I'll then take the outline when it's finished and I'll give it to chat GPT and I'll say, review this outline. You know, let me know if there's anything that I'm missing, anything you can think of, a better way to do it. Possibly it rarely comes up with that, but sometimes. And I had in my outline, you know, I love Tempfar, so does Adam. <laughs> and GPT, when it's, you know, giving me a list of suggestions, it says, the sentence is lighthearted, but might need clarification for a broader audience if they don't know Adam. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, Adam is one of the moderators on my website and uh, helps out a lot. And he is in love with badges and temp vars. So if you're seeing this, go on the website and find the temp vars video. This is it here. And it will explain what the deal is in more detail and leave Adam a comment down below and say, hey, I'm glad you got your temp fars video. <laughs> but that is going to do it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something in this two part series. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I will see you in the extended cut. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. 
manufacturing expert specializing in Access and SQL Server, Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and Amanda Nicole Consulting specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an Access database. You'll find links to the Diamond sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. 
plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.